This is, hands down, the most nerve-wracking moment of the build. Stay tuned. Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode. Hello, my friends. Today we're back at the log cabin, which is something we're so excited about. My dad and I are looking forward to just getting inside and bringing the interior to life. But if you watched our last episode, you'll know that we weren't able to stay at the ice cabin after all, uh, which is something that my dad and I built for my wife to fulfill her dream of staying at a nice hotel. But unfortunately, we built it a little bit too late in the season and we had an unexpected two day thaw. And although it was only for two days, it was very warm with high winds. So we had temperatures of 12 degrees Celsius and winds up to 90 kilometers per hour. So those warm winds battered the side of the ice cabin all day long. And by the end of it, it had begun to punch holes in the seams of the blocks, which of course compromised the structural integrity of the cabin. So at which point my dad and I came back the next day, we dismantled the roof and we're saving the lumber for a different project. So there's no wastage there. But to be honest with you, I was so disappointed to pull up and see the damage that the warm winds had done to the ice cabin because I really did want to stay there with my wife and daughter for a couple days and just enjoy our time there together. But it wasn't meant to be. Uh, the good news, it does mean that we're back at the log cabin a little bit early. So, I mean, this is our main project. Uh, we're just going to pour all of our hard work and love into this uh, because there's going to be lots of great memories with my family here. So onward and upward, we're going to keep it positive and see what we can do here today. Most of the items on today's work list, although challenging, were straightforward. Clad the dormer interiors, sand the roof structure, and scout the surrounding forest for materials. But it was the final item that weighed on my mind. It was the problem of the purlins, which ran across the dormers and partially obstructed their access. In fact, we couldn't enter the dormers without either ducking or bashing our heads if we failed to do the former. So our plan, after cladding the interiors, was to open the dormers up by removing the offending sections of purlin. Easier said than done, because once the purlins had been cut, there would be no going back after that. However, we were confident in our calculations, and we knew the structural integrity of the roof would remain solid. And yet, a small voice of doubt persisted within my mind. What if you're wrong? Well, I guess we'll just have to burn that bridge when we get to it. But presently, we've got a dormer to clad. Thank you.
perfect. Good. and a quarter. <laughs> Not a lot, that's all we need. With the dormers cladded and trimmed, we turned our attention to the next task, which was to sand the roof structure. Rafters, purlins, and ridge log were still heavily tarnished from years of exposure upon the seasoning pile. This was, of course, before we'd hoisted them onto the cabin and tucked them safely underneath the roof shelter. Although the stains remained, a good sanding was all they needed to once again reveal their warm wooden glow. But before we get to that, I'd like to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode. Simply Safe is serious home security, made simpler. I've been using Simply Safe for years, and I really enjoy the peace of mind that it offers, especially since I can use the Simply Safe app to check on my home anytime, anywhere. One of my favorite features is the outdoor wireless camera because it lets me know if it detects motion on our trail, and it holds up well to the cold. Another feature that I really appreciate is the smart lock especially when my family needed into the house but had forgotten their key. I was able to unlock the door for them remotely by using the Simply Safe app. Simply Safe's comprehensive lineup includes sensors to cover every window, room, and door. You can customize your system online and have it shipped directly to your door. As for the setup, I found it to be very straightforward. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com forward slash the outsider to learn more.
We sanded for several days, and we will need to sand for several more. However, the work we've already done has made a big difference so far. Well, I think my dad and I have had our fill of sanding for the day, but it's looking so much brighter. I'm really glad that we put in the work uh, because obviously it's made a big difference already. Now we've done pretty much everything above the loft, but there's still lots to do above the main area of the cabin or above the family room. So I'm thinking in total, it's gonna to be another two or three full days of sanding ahead of us. And that's because we're just taking our time to make sure that we get into every nook and cranny, especially behind the purlins and as well above and behind the ridge log. Uh, there's some difficult spots that we're working in. So we're just making sure that we're taking the time and doing the job right. Uh, because once we're done sanding, it'll be done and we won't ever have to worry about it again, at least not for many years to come. Anyway, like I said before, we're going to be putting our sanding tools aside, giving ourselves a bit of a break so that we can focus on something that I've been wanting to do for months now, and that is to remove these short sections of purlins in front of the dormers. Now, the good news is that when we remove these sections, it won't affect the structural integrity of the roof in any way. Otherwise, we wouldn't be removing them. And the thing about this roof was we made it extra strong. We cut these rafters to be large enough and we put enough of them onto the cabin that they're able to support the weight of the roof on their own. But after that, we went ahead and we installed the principal rafters and the purlins to give an extra source of strength uh, because we'd rather overbuild something than underbuild it. Besides, even with the short sections removed, the purlins, undergirded by the principal rafters, will comfortably continue to bolster the common rafters. The reason why we've kept these sections in for so long is because I've been using these purlins as a platform from where I can uh, work on the inside of the dormers. But now since that's complete, they can, they can be removed. And uh, honestly, I'm happy to see them go because my dad and I have bashed our head off of these purlins so many times. Uh, it's, so it's obviously a safety concern as is. Uh, anyway, that being said, I'm going to grab my chainsaw. We're going to remove these sections and go from there. This is, without a doubt, the most nerve-wracking moment of the build for me. Although this had been our plan all along, it went against every fiber of my being to cut through the purlins. I'm sure you can understand why. As you can see, the purlin didn't move, which is exactly what needed to happen, or not happen in this case. Now for the second purlin. It too remained solid, and I was able to breathe a sigh of relief.
After a little bit of sanding, the dormers were now open, which meant no more limbo contests or bashed heads upon entry. The final task of the day was one that I had been looking forward to, scouting the forest for uniquely shaped trees, which I'll use to make custom pieces for the cabin interior. Truth be told, my outdoor errand was mostly an excuse to get outside, enjoy the scenery, and decompress. Although I came across many beautiful trees, I let them be, save one small twisted cedar, which I marked for later harvest. Otherwise, I simply admired the rest. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless.